Everything Old is New Again is sponsored by the Law Office of Douglas Viviani. Douglas Viviani has been providing quality legal service for over 26 years. We're a general practice firm and can handle any legal matter you may have for a reasonable fee. If you're involved in a car accident, starting a business, planning your estate, or need a criminal attorney, please call 631-681-1910 or email us at vivianilaw at aol.com for a free consultation. Get the justice you deserve. Contact the Law Office of Douglas Viviani at vivianilaw at aol.com. You are listening to Everything Old is New Again with Doug Viviani and David Cohen. Is that right, Bob? I know. Uh, 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 Dave and, Dave and uh, uh, Doug. Dave and Doug. Dave and Doug. Yeah, they'll do. Okay. <laughs> they'll do. So will, uh, <laughs> so will you, Chuck and Bob, from Soap. This is Everything Old is New Again. I'm Douglas Viviani. I'm here with the omnipresent David Cohen. Omnipresent. I like it. You like that? Yeah. Um, we are responding on this show and the next show to some responses we received from our nine episode epic the september silliness of best sitcoms of all time which we came out to be seinfeld that was the ultimate winner but we got a lot of slack for our choices we did there was there was slack for, and there were emails yeah. and we have uh in this show uh, we've had someone is going to be calling in we'll talk about that shortly we also have my brother who is here Dr. John Viviani, who was uh, talking about the UFOs. We had him on previously, if you recall. He was so shows. ticked off, he showed up in the studio. So that's, that's <laughs> he, a good response. He knew we were doing the show. We didn't have him uh, really labeled in to do it, but he's knocking on the glass he door. He was here. angry. Yes, yeah, so uh, we were here at MacArthur Airport, and we had to call him in. So here he is, <laughs> prepared or not, uh, to discuss why he does or does not agree with our selections. Let me just start with one that that w a email came or a number of emails came in. People talking about this show. If one piece of candy gets past you and into the packing room unwrapped, you're fired. Yes, ma'am. Let her go. <laughs> well, this is easier. Yeah, we can handle this, okay? <laughs> Listen. We had a Loretta from Dix Hills talking about uh, the Lucy, I Love Lucy show, when we talked about our 1950s winner, which was the Honeymooners. And she was arguing that how do you even have a final three or four or five, if you will, without I Love Lucy, which in one form or another, Lucy was on television 25 years. Yeah. Um, and you, you do have to honor and respect certainly the time frame that she was in in the 50s and 60s, and what she did as a comedian. But to me, in my world, as we like to say... I thought we were going to stop the... I, that's that why was... I said that in quotes. In my world, I want to mock you myself. I promise you would never use that again. I never did that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe uh, I was wishful thinking on my part. You're going to have a nightmare tonight hearing that. But in my view of ah, that... okay. Um, she was wonderful, but the slapstick, after a while, it's the same show all the time. Yeah, I agree with that. It is the same show. It's funny, but the theme is the same. It never changed. And she can be really funny with the slapstick. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but, I mean, 25 years of it, sooner or later, it gets to be a little much. Right. Okay, so, Loretta, you're wrong. Right. So that one's out, and since she's not in the studio, forget <laughs> it. We're not even going to consider that show anymore. But, no, it is a valid point, because on its own, honestly, it could have made the final five if we didn't do this business of every, you know, every decade. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll disagree on, to, on that one. But let's talk about um, something that uh, the doctor finds uh, to be a problem is Get Smart in the 1960s winning that decade. Um, what do you think uh, should be the story on well, that? Well, I, I love Get Smart. I just think it was a little too much slapstick. And, again, I think that was the same thing over and over again after you did The Cone of Silence and his apartment and Jaime the Robot. It was a bit of more of a formula. I think that Dick Van Dyke uh, was much better written, and it – it was more unpredictable. It didn't have the same formula. Uh, it was a sophisticated show. I go for more sophisticated comedy, not just the uh, pratfalls and slapstick, things like well, that. You're a sophisticated kind of guy, yeah. Chad, so I see that. Well, um, I understand that, but I'm not a sophisticated kind of guy. Let's see what I like. There he is, my son-in-law, the 150-year-old oh. teenage punk. Uh, <laughs> I just can't uh, fight a chick. <laughs> I uh, got to get out there and drag it with the gases. Uh, otherwise, doll, I might... Blow by cool. I'm gonna build us a car, 
that I'm going to take to the drag races next Saturday and that I personally will win back our car from this lead foot bailer by beating him at his own game. I, I don't know what to say. That show to me just knocks me out. I First of all, it's the monsters. Just so people don't know, it, yes. it's it's the I'll, monsters. I'll put the monsters ahead of Get Smart too. Is it ahead wow. of Dick Van Dyke? No. All right, so that's why we'll start with the monsters in your your view. Because of the sophistication? No, a monsters. Well, plus if you're going to go, it only lasts for two years, right? If you're going by time frame, but. Uh, I mean, I, I still think. The, I mean, it had to get. Uh, what was that in sound? Was that an imitation of, 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 of Herman Munster? Yeah, that was Herman Munster. Lily, Lily, Lily. Munster's are great, uh, uh, but not as good as Dick Van Dyke, I don't think. Although I, I think they're pretty close. All right, but, let's compare. Let's hear a little something from Dick Van Dyke. What do you want me to say? Well, just once, I would like to hear you say it like you really meant it. Do I give you the impression that I don't mean it? Very, very clearly. Well, I'm sorry. Then I'll try to say it more convincingly. I don't mind that you and Jerry are going skiing this weekend, and I hope you both have a wonderful time. All right, boy, if you feel that way, I'll just stay home. Because <laughs> honestly, that sounds like my wife. She's not going to listen to the show. I'm not going to allow her. That is what she says every time I come out to record this show. Is that why you did not vote for Dick Van Dyke? I, Too close yeah, to home? I really love Vic, Dick Van Dyke, no doubt. But I, I don't know that I could watch it over and over again. Monsters I can watch over and over again. Mm. And now back to Get Smart to me, I can watch that over and over again, too. Just so creative. I thought, yeah, I understand what you're saying, John. I do. I think that uh, Dick Van Dyke was definitely, you know, better written. It was, it was more intelligent. It was, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Get Smart, though. If, if I'm watching for 30 minutes, to me, it just had more laughs in it in a 30-minute period than Dick Van Dyke did. But, but that's my criteria. Yeah. It doesn't have to be yours. Yeah. You know? I, I guess if you're looking at the, the creative effort that goes into it and the, and the writing behind it, and so you're going to say, best show, I'm not just looking at, you know, just the couple of laughs of, you know, uh, Slapstick laughs here and there, just the thought process behind a whole show. Well, let's talk about slapstick. I mean, that show did have. Oh, yeah, he was a great right. physical uh, Fe- comedian. Tremendous physical, but he also combined that with the, you know, the verbal barbs, yeah. if you will. And you've also got that uh, fellow, what was his name, the comedian uh, that would do the one line as Maury Amsterdam all right. the time. P- plus, you had the neighbor went on to become a great producer, uh, Jerry Paris. Yeah, Jerry Paris. Actually, right. great d- director. Uh, director. Directed, directed yeah. tremendous. Directed Happy Days and, and other shows. Yeah. So tremendous talent on the stage there. Speaking of which, and talking about c- comedy uh, in terms of slapstick, let's listen to an uh, interview with Ken Berry from F Troop about his pratfalls. And we put together this sequence where I did a series of near accidents and falls and stuff. And my character was uh, so focused that he couldn't see anything else, you know, and he was reading a letter, and he walked along, and all these things were happening or about to happen to him, and still reading the letter and exiting the shot, you know, never noticed any of that stuff happen. Buster Keaton was a friend, and he called me. He said, that was a good gag you did last night. I mean, he did add a lot to that show, but th- what do you think of that show, After Troop? It was good. I think that's on par with the uh, – I, I see it more like a, a Get Smart type show. You know, it was, it was good. I like, it was funny. I don't know if, it la- if, it, uh, if it's got longevity, but, you know, it was – And we're back to – Yeah, yeah. No, no I, really. I, <laughs> I like when you, like, make a left at the, bear, the right. rock that looks like a bear and a right at the, the, the bear that looks like a rock. I mean, if you can remember a quote <laughs> like that from a show from the 60s, you you, you got to say it. It's, it's got some substance. Well, I'm, I'm abnormal. I remember things like that. How about, it is balloon? <laughs> but how many quotes and lines do you remember from Dick Van Dyke? That's true. Not much because it was more of a story than a one-liner type thing. Right. Right. So, but you would still give it the edge. Yes, because I'm not. I'm not going by one line. This is not a stand-up act. Okay, you know I mean? interesting. Okay, right. well, there were other people that had called in, or I should say, emailed, and we've called later on uh, and talked about Hall and the family, and why did that not make them great? Say what? What you said about my work being nothing? It's helping people, and and I think people helping people is important. I was supposed to be the first one to go. You had no right to leave me that way without giving me just one more chance to say that I love you. <laughs> now, I'll leave it, the, the door open on this one, but to me, what a tremendous show. But then it turned, and there were many episodes that were serious. Mm. That, to me, you know, takes it out of the sitcom. Doesn't mean it was a great show, but it takes it out of the sitcom 
genre. It tackled a lot of issues at the time that that and it, and it got serious about it the, about Vietnam, about Watergate, racism, racism, absolutely trans transvestites. I mean, you you name it. It was on the show and and not always in a humorous way. It was sending a message. So it was more than just a comedy. So it right. wasn't. You can't just classify it. Just as a comedy, I think it did evolve, and it did, he's right; it did get serious at yeah. the end. And and the point we made originally was that it did jump the shark, which was another negative when it just mm. started to go on without Edith, and then without Mike and Gloria, and became Archie's place. And then who was that girl that suddenly he was living uh, with? That was Daniel Brisbois, whatever right. her name was. Right. Yeah, it just yeah, petered so, out. So we understand that. I think that's for the seventies. Back to get smart. Do we? Do we? concede the point on Get Smart or we dig in on this? I mean, it is a tough... 60s to me was the toughest decade there is. Yeah, it was tough. So, uh, I mean, I, it didn't go to the final three, so I can kind of concede. I, I can understand a Dick mm. Van Dyke, but I'm a big fan of that F Troop, too, but I, right. <laughs> I can't help it. Right. I, <laughs> I, I say Dick Van Dyke, why not? Yeah, I think it's just as valid as, as the, any right, so other. So we've gone to the videotape and it's Dick Van Dyke. Oh, we'll be back my, right after these commercials. Money. This portion of Everything Old is New Again is sponsored by ResumeDoctorInc.com. When you're seeking to change your career, apply for a promotion, or are trying to find a job, your resume is the first thing that's seen that represents you to a potential employer. Make sure your resume makes a clear, concise, and professional impression of who you are so you can get that job interview. Send your current resume to ResumeDoctorInc at AOL.com for a free online review. You'll receive a timely reply with a reasonable quote to properly prepare your resume. Let them make sure you have a resume that will get you noticed. Send your resume or questions to Resume Doctor Inc. at AOL.com. That's Resume Doctor Inc. at AOL.com. Who can turn the world on with her smile? Who can take a nothing day? And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show Welcome back to Everything Old is New Again. Dave is throwing his hat in the air as we speak. Sonny Curtis, <laughs> written by Sonny Curtis. <laughs> we are joined by Michelle from New York City. She's a huge fan, listens to us by uh, podcast, Everything Old is New Again, Doc right. Biz. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Great to have you on board. I know you were you. Uh, here for the first um, section of our show here, and uh, you bit your tongue, and I do appreciate that. We wanted to have a little civility here, but at this point, <laughs> I wanted to go back and, and revisit, revisit with you. We started this section with a Mary Tyler Moore um, theme there, and we'll get back to that in a few minutes, but I, I, we were talking off the air. I think you may have a comment or two about the last segment talking about Dick Van Dyke. Did you also agree with uh, my brother on that? I do. I totally agree with your brother. I mean, for the same reasons, too, is that it's story-driven. It's, it was a lot more intelligent and sophisticated. And the other shows, to me, like, I mean, The Monsters was really cute, you know? And the and the F Troop was also, like, a cute show. But, uh, yeah, Dick Van Dyke, for me, just really would win that category. You know, as you're saying down. that to me, I'm kind of thinking in my mind also that, I don't know why it popped in, but the, there is quite a variety of topics and type of humor on Dick Van Dyke that when you look at F Troop and the Munsters, kind of the same, different events, but kind of the same approach to their humor. But Dick Van Dyke, you know, had slapstick, also had some thoughtful humor, also had yeah. some family humor, also had some children's when the child was born and there's a you know, the kid running around there. So, I mean, do you join me with me on that or where do we stand? I do. I mean, I think they're all really entertaining shows, but it's just for me personally, I like, I like stories. Um, I like to watch families I, I mean but but in the moment of watching f troop it was very funny and very entertaining but if you're going to compare them and pick one out of the era definitely i would think dick van dyke would would win right so and, and from a female's point of view wrangler jane doesn't hold your attention to keep you uh, watching uh f troop so to speak as someone you, you can align with the entire <laughs> not <time>. really <laughs> no 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 i really like the for the time i thought you know still still kind of sexist when you look back at it you know dick van dyke with you know mary and everything she right. was home you know the happy homemaker but those were that was a reflection of the time so right. you really can't fault it but i like that she was a, like a she was a very um good you know she stood up to him you know she was a strong a strong character Okay, and speaking of strong yeah. characters there were four strong characters in all of fa all of the family and we had kind of 
look at the downside of All in the Family, but it was a wonderful show. It was funny, but um, we did talk about it being serious and in nature towards the end. Did you find that? Did that give you some some impression of the show, long lasting impression as we have, or do you feel that? Oh it's... yeah, I never like when sitcoms become serious. I hate, hate, hate that. Right. I hate, I hated it. I hated it with a lot of different shows. Whenever it got too serious. And, and Mary Tyler Moore never did. No. Until no. almost like and the last show, maybe they were crying, and I can remember them in that huddle. Exactly. Yeah, but and you I wanted to see that. Yeah. Right. With, with All in the Family, like, I think that the really, like, topics that they, you know, touched on racism and everything, like, for instance. I mean, I think if you can keep people laughing and, like, push the envelope, but like, with comedy, with laughing at it, it's a lot more effective. Because, Let's, you know, if you want to cry, you, you know. Like watch a movie or a drama, drama, you know. Makes total sense, especially for a sitcom. You've got a you know half I think hour. So. You know. I think so. Let's listen to what Mary uh, well, uh, Richards herself, if you will, Mary Tyler Moore, has to say about that. Do you realize how many young women you collectively influenced through no. this? Why did Mary Richards captivate? and really capture the hearts of so many people. I think it was because our writers wrote so honestly and with such love of comedy and yes. their dedication to keeping the comedy real. Now, there are two reasons why you called, and I know one of them was the Mary Tyler Moore show in the 70s. Uh, we came out with Odd Couple, but you wanted to <laughs> inform us about your opinion about Mary Tyler Moore, so I'd love to hear what you have to say about that well, show. Well, I mean, first of all, I thought one of, I, I remember when I was listening to your shows, I was thinking, well, why isn't one of the categories groundbreaking? Like, you know, that it pushed the genre forward, you know, and for, ground, for groundbreaking things. So I think, like, that... And then, and I, I, I didn't like your category of like one-liners, like stuff that for me that could have been replaced. But anyway, <laughs> for that reason, I thought Mary Tyler Moore should definitely get out of the decade and into your finals because it really was, like I think, one of the very first sitcoms where there was a woman character. She was single, you know. She didn't need a man. She never had a man. She never had a boyfriend on the show. She was never engaged. She was she had her own career that was independent of any man. And I got, and it, and it was hilarious and so well written. I mean, even better, better written than like, I mean, like Dick Van Dyke, really well written. And for that reason, I just didn't, you know, it's original. So yeah, I I, I thought I really did. I was like, what? I can't, I can't believe that you you picked Odd Couple over Mary. Tyler. I can't believe you picked almost anything over Mary Tyler Moore. I think you should have made the final for sure. Which, did you have a particular issue with the Odd Couple itself? Well, super hilarious i mean it's you know it's funny I, I i love the premise of it but it wasn't original you know it came from the neil simon play and then it was a movie so it was like it it it, it kind of it wasn't original it wasn't groundbreaking it was just like let's take a good idea that worked in the movie and the play i'm like let's make a sitcom out of it which is fine but it's just i don't think it makes it a finalist That's what also it's something with mary tyler moore um in 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 my uh, viewing of that show as a as a younger uh, man, uh, I remember that it was new in that it wasn't one line after the uh, after the other, or just you know let me do a, a, a setup line and then and then a joke. It was more of a show of a good feeling of this group of people and the things that they're going through. But it wasn't just it weren't one liners. That was the uh, the fellow went on to the Gavin McLeod went on to Love Boat. You know he did some one liners, but certainly. There was, was that wasn't the the heart of the show. No, you know, right. Every, no, no, it wasn't. But and, I, and I think that was important. Don't you think that that was something new that sitcoms were doing, or at least this show may have brought to the table? That, well, I mean, I think once, yeah, it's like very character driven. But I, I mean, I think that there were like hilarious lines in context with the story. You know, that you're not gonna, you're not maybe gonna walk away saying them, but in context mm -hmm. with, you know, the build up for that that punchline. There were lots of punchlines. But they were they telling more of a story, which yeah. I'm agreeing with you, you know, as opposed to the Munsters yeah. or F Troop, which was kind of like setting up a kind of a situation, but we want to do that so that we can do a bunch of jokes about it, about whatever that is. That's true. Yeah, yeah. And I just prefer the other type. I have to totally agree with Michelle. <laughs> I don't know who that was. I don't know where is that, that you? From. Who is that? John. <laughs> it was John. Brother. Oh, that's your brother. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I understand that. And they certainly also were surrounded, and she was like a ringleader, surrounded by a hugely talented group. Well, that's a, that's a credit to the writing and a credit to the acting, because any of those supporting characters 
I wouldn't even say they were supporting. There was an ensemble. Any of those characters could have, and a lot of them did, go on to have their own shows. Most they were them. strong enough to carry That's a true. show. You know, Lou Grant, right? Had a, yeah. it, was, it wasn't a sitcom, and but Rhoda it was a show. And uh, Phyllis. All the women were very strong. You're right. Yeah, oh, that's what I do. Yeah, I that for that reason I loved it. And now, then Michelle, when you were I, watching it as a as a uh, you know as it was when it was on, what were your yeah. what were your feelings? Did, did you look forward to this show? Did you smile when it was on? You laughed? Did you? Oh, what did, I smiled a lot while it was on. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I think it was on like Saturday nights, which is so odd now. Thinking like the big shows were on Saturday night, you know. Yeah, I remember right but after. Was, um, I think it was after Newhart, right? No, before it was Newhart. Newhart. Mary Tyler Moore, Love American Style, Carol Burnett. Right. And then eventually Love Boat after that. Uh, if oh, you could so that left. was like a big night of TV. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was very young, you know, but um, sure. I mean, I fantasized about living in my own apartment in Minneapolis and by myself, you know. That's great. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I did. I, I thought I think it, it is is great to hear that, like you know, someone that that can associate with the show, uh, like like kind of like we do. But it's a different show that we're not aligned with. It doesn't mean it's not a wonderful show and had a great effect on people, yeah. just like this did. Right, right. Dave. Maybe we were being. I don't know. Could could we have been been very like male centric with this whole thing and just blown over Mary Tyler Moore? I, be- I think that you guys were a little male centric mm. in your picks. I mean. Yes, I do. It is possible because, uh, you know, the odd couple... We're males, by the way, so it would be male-centric. I'm thinking about the women on odd couple. They were very, I mean, yeah, I know, like, you know, the Peacock sisters and, I mean, the ex-wives. There was was nobody. Right, no no females to align with, you know. Pigeon sisters, by the way. Not the peacock. Not that it wasn't funny. It certainly, I love that show. All right, you know what? We love the two, and I, I will have to reconvene on this whole thing. I think I, you know, you may be swaying us a little bit on on this one as yeah. well. Let's just go out with a little bit of the Odd Couple. <laughs> Everything Old is New Again is sponsored by the Law Office of Douglas Viviani. Douglas Viviani has been providing quality legal service for over 26 years. We're a general practice firm and can handle any legal matter you may have for a reasonable fee. If you're involved in a car accident, starting a business, planning your estate, or need a criminal attorney, please call 631-681-1910 or email us at vivianilaw at aol.com for a free consultation. Get the justice you deserve. Contact the law office of Douglas Viviani at vivianilaw at aol.com. You went back to the jockeys? Wrong again. (laughs) Oh, no. What? What? Don't you see what's going on here? No boxers, no jockeys. The only thing between him and us is a thin layer of gabardine. Kramer, say it isn't so. Oh, it'd be so. Oh. I'm out there, Jerry, and I'm loving every minute of it. And we're loving being on the air. Everything old is new again. I'm Douglas Viviani, and I'm with the omnipresent David Cohen. Good evening. Thank you. We shouldn't use that tone because this is the show about uh, comedy, if you will. We're continuing Sitcoms. our discussion of the sitcom, and the last week's show uh, was so invigorating and enjoyable that we've asked the same two guests to come back this week to talk about a couple of more shows that they have a little bit of a problem with, if you will. And they said yes. Yeah, they did. My brother is here. <laughs> he had to come back. He couldn't say no. And uh, he Michelle has nothing from, to do. That's true. Yeah. Michelle from New York is here in New York City. Wow. And she's on the phone. Michelle, you still there? Hi. All right. Terrific. Hi so again. It's great to Hi. hear you. Here, you've had some great feedback from everything you had to say about Mary Tyler Moore at the end of our last show. So we're a little bit up in the air. We, we seem to have changed our mind on the 60s, and we seem to be a little bit swayed from your arguments on Mary Tyler Moore. So um, I don't know if that affects the ultimate result, but it certainly affects kind of the steps that we got to the final three. Yeah. And at this point, I played uh, Seinfeld because we talked off the air. Obviously, you've emailed us at, at oldnewagain at, a, at AOL.com, and we had a conversation about why did we put Seinfeld into the 1980s, and by so doing, we may have affected the results. Is that what your your argument is? Yeah, it's like, you know, I might have gotten pregnant in 1998, but I had my baby in 1999, so you know what I mean? It's like, just because they started the show, I mean, the whole show was in the 90s, so I think that is the quintessential 90s show, Seinfeld. So I was, 
really disappointed that it was in the 90s. All right, now, to argu- argumento, if, if the show, let's just say we buy your argument, if you, if, if you will, oh, i got to say that again, uh, that, <laughs> that the 1990s should have Seinfeld in it, then do you feel that the 90s should have won Seinfeld over what the eventual winner was, Raymond? Let's start oh, there. Oh, God. Are you kidding? Of course it would have. No, no contest. All right, well, I had in your world, I like to say in everyone's wait, world. Michelle, Michelle in a starting. woman's world, or I don't know, whatever. No, say in my world. I like to hear that. All right, I'll, I'll stay in your world. No, in your <laughs> world, I'm saying. Whose world are we in? <laughs> <laughs> We're always in Doug's world. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's assume that that's the case, but Seinfeld still wins there, so the ultimate winner may, may still be Seinfeld in this scenario. But what are you saying then about the 19... 19- 80s, what show oh. out of what was there should have come risen to the top instead of Seinfeld? I mean, listen, I know it jumped the shark, don't get me wrong, but I think Roseanne definitely was, again, like I said last week, so groundbreaking, not just for women, because I don't like to always make it about women, but just for shows in general, for the show like The Blue Collar Worker uh, and... Um, you know, life on the other side. I don't know. It just was like a glimpse into that. And again, it, until it took itself too seriously, it never took itself. I mean, I guess there were some shows that were a little serious. Right, but let, they always brought it back to comedy. Let, you know, let's see Let's way. see what we have to hear about that. Okay. You are a big, fat guy with absolutely no self-control. You're Jerry Garcia without the music. Let's back up here. You're calling me fat? Yeah, I'm calling you fat. Well, if that ain't the big, fat pot calling the kettle black. You better not be calling me fat. Well, that's what I'm doing. Fat, 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 fat. Other than that sounding like Thanksgiving at my house, which is funny unto itself. I don't know. This is just me. Again, I'm going to go back to, if you remember, of course, you listen to the show. Anyone that's out there that heard our show on the 80s, to to me. This Roseanne is constant bickering, bickering, fighting, yelling. I don't think it's funny. Just to me, I don't think it's funny. And I think the all in the family kind of did that in a fun, funny way. Honeymooners did that, and you saw the love between the couple. I don't know. You tell me. Do you feel that you that you feel the love between those two in this show? Maybe I'm missing something. Oh, listen, they were very sexually attracted to each other too. I mean, I don't know if you watched the show a lot, but you know, they were always jumping into bed together. So, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I well, Doug, you and I disagreed on this. Oh, actually, in jumping the original into bed doesn't show. mean you love somebody. <laughs> That's in my it. world, it does. <laughs> I love it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Good. That might yeah. be the best of for the 2015 <laughs> in my world. Somebody uh, else said that. Well, listen, I saw the show where there was a politician at the door, and she was, you know, bitching and moaning at this guy because she couldn't get from the government what she wanted. They're talking about their weight all the time. The sister was abused by the boyfriend. Uh, they, uh, she got, got married too early, was arguing with her husband about that all the time. So there were serious, uh, you know, discussions that went on in the show. I'm not putting the show down because of that. Because honestly, I think, to me, uh, Roseanne did well at the serious topics, honestly. But the funny yeah. stuff wasn't funny to me. That's just me. Oh, I see. What I think that is just you. It is no, just you. It was you. Wait, oh, it was John, it too. It's me, too. It's not funny. Wow. Not Mich- funny. Michelle, what do you, it's a different point of view. Do you feel that, that opens your uh, a light bulb, let's say, over your head? I don't well, know. Well, I mean, I don't think you make a bad point. They did do a good job. I'm thinking especially of Jackie, the sister, when she was being hit. Right. Yeah, you know, that was a really good show, and there was a lot of humor in it. But they like, you know, they took a really serious issue. I thought that was a really, really good show. But I mean, I'm thinking like, was that more powerful than like some of the like just straight on funny stuff? I mean, you kind of have a point, but oh god. I'll let you uh, I'll listen. I'll let you think about that for a moment while we turn to Cosby, which may have been the competitor okay. then in this scenario. Okay. Have you ever seen Dora Santa? Um. Caucasian or African American or Asian? Santa Claus is whatever y- you are in that house. When, it, when when he comes down the chimney, let's say that uh, you you were Japanese, he would be zoom Japanese. What color is he at the North Pole? You have to ask Mrs. Santa Claus. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just wanted to throw that in there because I think that if we're throwing out. Uh, Seinfeld from the 80s. We can go back to Roseanne, certainly, but I wanted to throw in the idea because 
the Cosby show certainly was something that was popular at the time, whether it's a great show or not, we could talk about, but was popular during the 80s for sure, number one, all many, many weeks. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I think the thing with Cosby is that I remember them, you know, it being said that it really brought back the sitcom. I mean, it, it gave it life because I think at the time, you remember when, like, all the big shows were like Dallas and what it was, Dynasty and Melrose Place and those types of shows, and the sitcom was really dying out. And I think Cosby revived it, thank goodness. But I think it also was a great show, but I think it also was groundbreaking. Like, I like that column, like, I mean, that, that category again. Like, it broke ground, it was a African-American family, not every issue was about race, which I love, and it brought back the comedy to television. And one know? of the so, things it did, I think, bring back was the family uh, to oh, the yeah. sitcom. So you really, if you, you don't have time to go through all of it, but if you go through the 70s sitcoms, much of them were not family-oriented at all. That's true. Um, and if they were, there was a problem with the family. So this was, this was a nice... Uh, yeah, it was a successful family. They were not in the ghetto. Yeah, they were, they, and, they, and they really um, professed uh, the love for each other and all that. That was okay to do. We, we kind of had gotten away from that a little bit. So I can understand that. Do you th- so do, do you think now, if you look at Roseanne and Cosby, Michelle, where do you feel uh, uh, either, either of those two rule the 80s or oh, are you missing something? You know, I think because... Cosby also got away so drastically from stereotyping, whether it was, you know, the wife, you know, being a strong character, a lawyer, you know, out on her own, not out on her own, but, you know, making money, too, that was great, and also African-American family that every everybody could relate to. Like, it, well, that wasn't, it wasn't, it was meant for everybody, that show. But I love Roseanne because of Roseanne herself. I just think, I don't, to me, it was so funny. I mean, it, it was so funny. Okay. So... But I, I think your overall point, and, and I admit it, I mean, I think we made a mistake with putting Seinfeld. I mean, we were trying to be very technical about this, that if a sitcom started in a, in a decade, that was the decade it belonged. But, but in retrospect, I think we knocked out too many good sitcoms from and the also, 80s. And also, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, for the 80s. This and, is and a weak one for the 90s, Raymond. Yes, yes, and this is unique to Seinfeld, which is a unique show also, in that in all of the decades we did this, there's only one show really, that started in, you know, one decade in the nines, let's say, 89, 79, whatever, and went over into the next decade. Maybe. Uh-huh. Um, so to give us a benefit of the doubt there. So so we're, we're saying that we would consider um, this argument. Um, and so you would, I, if I listen to you right, you're saying Roseanne would, would win in the 80s, Michelle. I think it edges out Cosby, because Cosby could get a little sentimental at time, and I hate that. And I know that Roseanne... But so Roseanne jumping the shark so drastically really does put it back a little bit. Yes, I think it edges out Cosby, though. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll consider that one for sure, and we're going to be continuing this discussion on Everything Old is New again on the other half of the breaks. So we'll be right back. Well, you know, looks like the sands of time have run out on our Mr. Kincaid, huh? This portion of Everything Old is New Again is sponsored by ResumeDoctorInc.com. When you're seeking to change your career, apply for a promotion, or are trying to find a job, your resume is the first thing that's seen that represents you to a potential employer. Make sure your resume makes a clear, concise, and professional impression of who you are so you can get that job interview. Send your current resume to ResumeDoctorInc at AOL.com for a free online review. You'll receive a timely reply with a reasonable quote to properly prepare your resume. Let them make sure you have a resume that will get you noticed. Send your resume or questions to ResumeDoctorInc at AOL.com. That's ResumeDoctorInc at AOL.com. We're back, and everything old is new again, like letting the fans argue with the hosts. I'm not going to say The experts. Maybe I was hesitating there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Michelle from New York City is with us, and my brother, Dr. John Viviani, is here. And we had just gone out in the last clip. Um, um, if you recall that clip, it's kind of obscure. I'm just going to ask you to listen to that again for two seconds. Number 13. Oh, yeah, looks like the sands of time. That's Don right Knotts. This is Cosby's show from the 70s, which I thought was hysterical. It only lasted two years. All right, you goons have had your fun.
fun. Now, why don't you just cool it? And that's Mark Hamill. Hey, hey, hey. Luke? That's Mark Hamill, Luke himself, from the, from the, uh, the Cosby show in the 70s, and he was Chet Kincaid, a teacher. He only lasted two years, a very funny show, but he wasn't getting what he wanted. In other words, he wanted to pr produce that show a certain way and have certain issues discussed, which later on became the topics of the Cosby show, which hmm. we just talked about last segment. Interesting. Um, but um, this was the precursor. This was his first foray into comedy on television. Very talented man. Um, we're back. We started this with uh, talking about um, uh, should the fans uh, speak back, and if they do, what do they say to us? Well, they're saying that we were wrong on many uh, levels. Now we're turning to the 2000s. We started with the Curb uh, Your Enthusiasm theme. Why did we do that? Doctor, what's that all about? Well, first of all, uh, Curb, I think, is so much better than uh – then if you're comparing it to Big Bang, Curb is, is Seinfeld on steroids. So if you like Seinfeld, you're gonna you should love Curb. It's a different format though because it's an hour and it's, it takes a while to set up the story to get the, the to get the, the laughs going. But when you do laugh, I find it gut bursting funny. It's just it's just uh, you. I have people over my house to watch that, and you're literally laughing so hard that you're 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 you're, you're crying almost. That's how I feel about Curb. Um, the, the writing's fantastic, and I think Larry David's a genius. Um, well, I mean, I think Larry David certainly had a big hand. We'll just start with the Seinfeld reference. He, he maybe we don't all know, helped create Seinfeld with Jerry Seinfeld. Um, he was a producer of that, and I don't know if he wrote many of the episodes. Sure he certainly did. influenced them. Mm, yeah. He did write many. Yeah. I think he may have had influence. Maybe we can live without libraries, people like you and me. Sure, we're too old to change the world. <laughs> what about that kid sitting down, opening a book right now in a branch of the local library? and finding drawings of peepees and wee-wees <laughs> and a cat in a hat. Doesn't he deserve better? This is about that kid's right to read a book without getting his mind warped. Maybe that's how you get your kicks. You and your good time buddies. <laughs> good time buddies. <laughs> Michelle, any thoughts about uh, uh, Seinfeld, you know, at this point comparing it to, um, you know, anything in the 90s? Let's just finish that off. Do you, I well... Know, I mean, it's like what your brother said about Curve, which I loved also, but, like, when my husband and I used to watch Seinfeld, you know, fresh, you know, that night, we used to fall off our couch laughing. Right. Now, I have never fallen off my couch laughing at anything ever since or before. You know, I just think it wins hands down. I can't argue with Seinfeld. Well, let's, th that's a great segue right into a little bit. We could just hit a sm smidge of Curb and see if it's the same kind of comedy. We're kind of having a little bit of a problem with the, uh, the bear midriff. With my shirt? This is all exposed in the stomach. Do you know that I have lost 68 pounds in two years? That is fantastic. Thank you. I'm so happy I'm for you. I'm very proud of it, and That's I want to flaunt what I've got. You can flaunt two-thirds of the day outside of the office, and then you got one-third non-flaunt. You have to flaunt 24 hours? Well, why not take a break in the flaunt? <laughs> You can hear Seinfeld kind of show in there, right? Well, you got to know for that clip, though, that she's still overweight. Right, right, of course. <laughs> so, so tell me a little something about, uh, you know, Curb and not versus Seinfeld. I don't know if we're going to, you know, no. challenge that, but Curb versus the 2000s. We did Big Bang. So you feel it's head and shoulders above anything else? Uh, uh, no, I think it's much. If you're going to compare it to Big Bang, my problem. Uh, yeah, I, no, I just wanted Curb to get its its due uh, justice. I think it's really good, but my problem is, I, I guess I'm more anti Big Bang than pro Curb at this point. Right? Why now. is Let's, that? Why is that? Yeah, what's that? If you're going to compare them, well, first of all, I don't think. Well, Big Bang's on on was on the networks, right? So what's its competition? It's got longevity, but what's its competition? Like Mike and Molly, Two and a Half Men. <laughs> I mean, these aren't great sure. shows. It's the comedian. Goldbergs right now. It's got. Uh, but but, but to me, the cur um, <laughs> it's well written. I find Big Bang amusing uh, and after a while, but I get tired of the nerdy aspect of them not being able to associate with women. How many times can you be like, oh, I don't know how to be around a girl or, you know, because I'm a nerd. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's well written, but it's just not great. Well, nothing wrong with being a nerd, and in that scenario, nerds got the women. If you follow, you, Obviously, you're but, not a fan of the show, which is fine. It's um, okay. I'll watch it, women. but I'm not going to watch it over and over and over again. All right, let's see why we like that. You know who's got to be the bravest person in the Marvel Universe? Who has to give She-Hulk a bikini wax? <laughs> you want to talk brave? How about Captain America's undocumented Mexican gardener? He's not braver than whoever uses the bathroom after the thing. <laughs> As usual, you're all wrong. The bravest person in the Marvel Universe is the doctor who gives Wolverine his prostate exam. 
Michelle, I'm going to ask you, do you find that to be brown, groundbreaking in, in any way? So, you know, that's certainly oh, no. one of your categories. Absolutely not. Yeah. I don't think that's it. I think it's amusing, but I don't think it's groundbreaking. I think if it wasn't for Jim Parsons, that show would have gone nowhere. Interesting. You don't think that, uh, I'll ask the doctor, you talked about nerds. Um, do you feel this show, I mean, it's going to be on the year, uh, on the season, uh, at the season for 13 years. Again, no competition. But the question is, did it not change our society with respect to the opinion of nerds and have that become a little more acceptable uh, to like comic books and so forth? No. <laughs> I think it did. I think it did. I think it had a big influence on, well, on the I, nerd I, culture. I, I, I think people still have their opinion on people are like, I love comic books, but you, it is what it is. It's like going to a Star Trek convention. You're trying to bring Star Trek back into this thing again, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think it, it put more emphasis on that it's okay to be smart and okay to be a nerd? Well, our whole society's changing like that because uh, we respect computers. Look at Bill Gates, uh, Facebook. It's not, I don't think people look down on nerds, but it's not because of Big Bang Theory. It's because okay. we love technology huh. well that might be right. a show that we need to investigate because i think that's a huge topic because i think revenge of the nerds back but are we talking about it being a show being funny but there's also what we talk about is it groundbreaking, groundbreaking. does it have characters that are unique um you know of course is it funny is certainly a category but we had other categories well can i throw something else in there one thing you and i talked about doug on the on the, on the show about this was that you know there there's you can put together a matrix and you know charted out which one's funny or based on certain criteria but there's also that intangible you know th something about the show that makes you feel good you can't explain why I know with the Big Bang Theory I watch it with my family yeah. and I don't know I like Would it you buy the it... DVDs and watch it 10 years from now no all right then no. I think you I don't it. think I'd do that with Curb you either. wouldn't uh, uh, and, and by the way I'm oh, a big I disagree. the Curb you can oh, watch wait, we have a we have a dissent well, Michelle you would on Mich on oh my god Curb Your Enthusiasm is classic. Yes, you will definitely watch Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Then Big Bang. I like this, Michelle. Larry yeah. David. This Michelle and I agree a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you live the other thing about Big Bang, can I just say before, yes. you know, I don't want to, but it, it, next time you watch it, two things. Next time you watch it, the laugh track is so distracting. It's ridiculous. The laugh track they had, one. And two, it's incredibly sexist, you guys. Yeah. So it's Big not. Bang? Oh, my God. I don't want to go into it, like, a, you know, because I could get very <clears throat> worked up about it, and I want to <laughs> well, let's, notice that the next time. Right, okay. Let's have you laugh instead. We'll hear a little something here. Who the hell did you ever mention his hands to? I mentioned his hands to plenty of people. You never mentioned it to me. I always talk about your hands, how they're so soft and milky white. No, you never said milky white. I said milky white. <laughs> Gorgie. Would you like some jello? Why'd you put the bananas in there? George likes the bananas! So let him have bananas on the side! All right, please! I cannot have this constant bickering! But, Georgie, what about the jello? I'll take it in my room. <laughs> All right, now I have to admit, now there's a show or a couple that are bickering, but not the entire show. It's just a clip here and there. Well, not it's not about show. them. Right. And I love it. I don't know why. Yeah. Michelle, what did you think of that? Does that make you laugh at all? Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm so to that. Doctor, what do you think of the Seinfeld uh, era? Oh, Seinfeld's fantastic. It's um, it's definitely up there in my maybe one or two. All right, so let's go back to the 2000s, though. Curb versus Big Bang. Dave, are we uh, thinking twice on this based on what we're hearing? You know, I'm a huge Curb fan, and I don't care if I'd never watch it again. I'd never watch Big Bang again. To me, that's not as important. Um, I think technically, yeah, yeah, I think Curb, I think Curb has it. So then Sorry. is this show and the last show basically pulling the rug out from everything we've done? Or is this the last straw in the camel's back and our whole thing has now just fallen on its face? Might have fallen on its face. Wow. It's possible. <laughs> but I can say one thing. We all agree that Seinfeld is the best sitcom of all time. Do no, we? what about Do the we? Mooners? Oh, wow. We're oh. going to have to go have another show about that. We'll talk to you soon. Everything old is new again. Thank you, Michelle from New York City. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. John Viviani. Thank you, David Cohen. We will be back on Everything Old is New Again. Listen to us at the podcast if you miss a show. Everything old is new again. Dr. Biz.